Hey everybody, what's up? Uh, I thought today I'd upload another video about language learning. And um, I know it's been a while that I haven't. I, I don't want you guys to think this is just a, a forum in which I practice a bunch of different accents. I, I want to really dedicate this channel to, to learning language because that's my passion. And I also want to work on the teaching side. Um, so essentially I wanted to talk today about the importance of studying before studying abroad. So a lot of people think that when they're studying abroad, when they go abroad and they live abroad for uh, one semester or one year, that they're going to come back speaking amazing Spanish. And let me tell you, it's not the case in a lot of cases. The people that are most able to make uh, significant gains in the second language while they're studying abroad are the people who already spoke the language pretty decently before leaving. So right now I'm, I'm working on a research paper uh, which studies the effect of uh, cognitive preparedness uh, in a second language um, on language gains in a second language context, such as studying abroad. Uh, I'm going to try not to get into too much jargon. Uh, I want to keep it really simple. But um, essentially, the research points to the, to the existence of a threshold, a minimum threshold of working memory re resources uh, necessary for people to uh, make gains while they're studying abroad in terms of lexical production, lexical comprehension. Okay, so essentially, um, what are the implications? The implication is that if your Spanish is so basic um, that when you're abroad, you're not able to focus on more subtle aspects of the language. For example, uh, if you're in Spain, right, and somebody um, starts to talk to you about well, whatever. So you know you're 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 talking to a friend and, and they're saying, "Hotel, fui al club, lo pasamos pipa, Italy, final, salí ciego." Um. So in English, that would be, we went to the club, we had a good time, and we got really drunk, right? Well, if you're if you are using all of your working memory resources, simply processing what they're saying, you're, you're thinking, "Okay, fuimos al club." Se pusieron ciego, bebieron mucho, al parecer. You know, if you're thinking like that, then what does that mean? It means that you're basically using up all of your attentional resources just focusing on meaning. And then what happens? Well, afterwards, you need to produce something as well. And the fact that you've used up all of your cognitive resources focusing on meaning means that you have less cognitive resources available for creating your own response and for processing for more subtle aspects of the input, such as slang, so um, or slang, or could be um, uh, form, such as past tense, present tense, things like that. Was, yeah, and nos pusimos ciegos, right? We got really drunk. Um, so essentially, when you're abroad, you're going to be receiving a lot of second language input, and it can be overwhelming and what happens is that people that don't have don't reach a certain threshold of cognitive resources uh, sometimes can get so frustrated in the language that there's breakdowns in communication and these are the types of these are the type of people that you see a lot of times when you go studying abroad and they only hang out with English speakers why because they realize it's so frustrating to try and communicate themselves in Spanish uh, to communicate in Spanish that that they decide, oh fuck it, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna just go and, uh, and hang out with my American friends, right? Whereas the people who really, really gain in a second language context are the people who that already spoke the language decently before leaving. Okay, so when I studied abroad in Mexico, before studying abroad in Mexico, I was listening to podcasts like every day for like three or four hours, and I had a a program called Behind the Wheel Spanish. So every day I will walk around mumbling to myself in Spanish, saying like, "Quiero una cerveza," you know, like things like that. And uh, essentially, I feel that I was very well prepared for my study abroad program, and that allowed me to attend to more subtle aspects of the language than simple meaning. So a lot of people say, "Well, Daniel, how did you how did you learn accents so well?" I don't think that I'm inherently talented at, at language learning or accents or anything like that. I think that everybody can learn uh, accents just as well.
But what I am good at is putting in a lot of time into studying. Uh, so every day when I'm driving around, doing my activities, whatever, I'm, I usually have my headphones on and I'm usually listening to podcasts. So what does that do? Well, in terms of cognitive resources, it automatizes cognitive access. So what does that mean? It means that it becomes cheaper for me in terms of uh, the allocation of scarce cognitive resources to to um, it becomes cheaper to basically process for meaning, process for slang, process for form, things like that. And what that means is that when the, the expense of these cognitive resources is relatively cheaper, then I still have room for other uh, parts of language learning, such as the accent. So before studying abroad in Mexico, I, I studied like every day I was listening to Mexican podcasts, things like that. And I felt very well prepared. And then, of course, when I got to Mexico, I had a super gringo accent. And, um, but I was able to really improve my Mexican accent in the Mexican style because I was able to have a decent conversation with my gringo accent. Right? And then, so what that means is I was able to attend to meaning and still process for more subtle aspects of the, of the language. And later when I went to Spain, same case, um, I started to listen to a lot of podcasts in Spanish uh, from Spain, right? Uh, a podcast called Cabreados, Cabreados, which is really good. I'll put the link below. And um, that prepared me to be able to not only process for meaning, but also to process for uh, dial a difference in dialects or differences in accents, things like that, more subtle aspects of the language. So studying abroad, is a really great thing that you guys can do to improve your Spanish. But it also depends, how much you're going to improve is going to depend a lot on how well you prepare yourself beforehand. So something to think about, um, study hard, listen to a lot of podcasts, do your grammar workbooks. I'll suggest a couple books below. I think I already suggested a few books in my, in my other series. Because honestly, I had a lot of people who studied abroad just as long as I did, and they didn't realize, they didn't make gains in the second language. I, of course, they, they were able to make some basic conversation, but in terms of overall fluency, invariably, the people that learned more were the people who were more fluent when they arrived. So, something to think about. It's not just study abroad, it's also studying before studying abroad. Okay. I uh, hope this was helpful. Take care. Bye, everybody.